Amen. Amen and amen. Roman, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 as we get into the word of God. Uh, we're starting our series this month on faith. Glory to God. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6. The Bible says, but without faith, it is impossible. That's where my sentence starts from. I, I didn't want to, I, I'm going to finish the whole chapter, the whole verse rather. But it says, but without faith, it is impossible. That means to raise the capital without faith, it is impossible. To get the healing without faith, it is impossible. The project, it is, it, it's, it's not even going. It says, for without faith, it is impossible. And, and the reason I'm saying so is this. A lot of us have places in our lives. And let me tell you something. If you're going to do big thing in life, you must be a fit person. Because... You would almost want to die. But your faith in God is going to raise you up. He now says something here. He says, without faith it is impossible. Are you believing God for a child? He says, without faith it is impossible. Some of you are believing God for the next funding, for the next level of your business. Without faith it is impossible. Some of you are believing God for some kind of approval. Without faith it is impossible. Some of you want to break through an addiction. Without faith, it is impossible. Some of you want to move your prayer life to the next level. Without faith, it is impossible. The foundation of all of this is your faith. He says, let's give it ready now. And the reason I'm saying so is this. I wish there was another way than the faith way. But the truth is this. There's no other way than the faith way. You will see throughout the Bible that the people that distinguished themselves were the people of faith. The people that did mighty things were the people of faith. They did supernatural faith. They were just faith people. And I'm saying to you, when you want to rate yourself, do you call yourself a faith person? Someone says, how, do you, how can you tell if I'm a faith person or not? Listen to me, you can be coming to church and not be a faith person. If you're a faith person, this is how you will know. How much risk do you take on God's word? Mm. how much what risk the reason why is that church is full of talk of faith and not living the life of faith faith people don't talk a lot they do a lot read Hebrews chapter 11 you will hear them say that and by faith Abraham did this and by faith Moses did it and by faith did you notice something everybody that had faith was not talking they were doing you can't be a faith person and not a doer the proportion of your doing is the proportion of your faith. Oh, glory to God. I say glory to God. I say glory to God. So he says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. So why is faith important? Number one, without faith, you cannot please God. There's no way for you to walk with God. It's impossible. Let's start from as simple as salvation. You know, I don't know if you're like me, but I got born again as a child. I got born again like minimum like 50 times. How many of you got born again like 25 times? You went for the altar call. You know, and there were these bad, there were these bad preachers. When they preach and nobody comes out, they wanna say, they wanna say, mm -hmm. so you think you're born again. Yet you lied last night. And you did this two nights ago. Then they will guilt trip everybody. I say, you are going to hell. You are not born again. You know, and I will come out again for what? Altar call. And the reason I'm saying that to you, this is the reason I'm saying that to you. The reason I'm saying that to you is this. Because the only way you can be saved and stay saved is by faith. When you get born again, you, there's nothing you will feel. You don't feel different. Some people feel something, but most of us that are normal feel nothing. What does the Bible say? Hebrews chapter 2 verse 8. What does the Bible say? The Bible says, By grace are ye saved through faith, not of works, but as a gift of God. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 8. So, even salvation, it says, even, sorry, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8, not Hebrews. Not Hebrews. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. It says, By grace are ye saved. The believer is called to a life of faith. The believer is called to a life of faith. He said, by grace are you saved through faith, 
and not of yourself. It is the gift of God. So how do I know I'm born again? And that's the problem a lot of you have. A lot of you are born again, but you don't believe you are. But you believe that you have an addiction problem. You believe, see, you believe you have an addiction problem. You believe you have a smoking problem. But now that God has changed you, it's difficult for you to believe that you are saved. And guess what? It's what you believe that you become. So, if you're saved and you believe that I'm an addict, then instead of becoming a saved person, you become an addict. So, Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Do you know that you cannot even pray? See, even the concept of prayer lies on the fact of faith. It's the fact that you believe that God will answer your prayers. That's the concept of prayer. He said, without faith, it is impossible to please God. Every believer is called to a life of faith. Every believer is called to a life of faith. And there are two, see, there are two choices. You can either be moved by your feelings or you can be moved by faith. So I said, what do I mean to move by faith? Living by faith means living by the word of God. For example, I can feel hungry. That's my feeling. But what does the word of God say? Living by faith means living by the word of God. Somebody said, when we say living by faith, no, that everybody's not saying. They say living by faith, living by faith. means living. Living, by living, by God. God. living by the word of God. Say living by the word of God. Everyone needs to say, let me tap and say, you're not saying it yet. Saying it yet. Say living by faith, living by faith. means living. living by the word of God. Living by the word of God means living by faith. Those in the gallery say living by faith means living by the word of God. Living by the word of God means living by faith. That's it. So for example, you look at yourself and you are, you know, you look at yourself and you feel very sad. But yet the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. There are two feelings present. There's a natural feeling that you're feeling very sad. But I can switch the feeling of faith and say, the joy of the Lord is what? He's my strength. So, for example, the scripture we read earlier, Job 22 verse 29. The Bible says, when men say there's a casting down. See, I can also say that things are truly terrible. But I can switch to the level of faith and say, when men say there's a casting down, we can say there's what? A lifting up. So, gas price has gone up. Dollar has gone up. But guess what? I have also gone up. Why? Because when men say there's a casting down, I can say there's a lifting up. You know, someone looks at you and says, wow, I don't think I ever get married. You say, you're too late. The Bible says there's no good thing that God will withhold from me. See, I understand in the physical, I don't have someone I'm dating. But this is what the word of God says. And the Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. Oh, glory to God. You know what I mean by settled? Have you gone to eat in a restaurant before and you're about to pay the bill? And they will say, sorry, the guy that you came with earlier on has settled it. That means there's nothing else to do. There's nothing else to pay. There's nothing else to do. So God looks at you and says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled. What does that mean? He says that what I've said about you, it is settled. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. So someone looks at you and says you're a failure. You say, excuse me, I understand how you feel about me. But the word of God says I'm the head, I'm not the tail. I'm above only, not beneath. Listen to me, I failed the exam, but I'm not a failure. I, I failed the investment, I'm not a failure. The reason why is that an action, a verb and a now are different. I can fail at something, that's a fair, but I am not a failure. But if I persist, my success nature will come out. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. hallelujah. Just hold on one second. I want to tell the pastor something. Pastor Jerry. Pastor Jerry, and you. Pastor Jerry come.
Hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. So what does living by faith mean? Living by the word of God. See, living by the word means being persuaded by the word. Let me give you an example. Who has met someone that got pregnant? Either yourself, your sister, and you found out you got pregnant. Okay, who's gotten pregnant before? <laughs> Many people cannot raise up their hands. <laughs> wow! Jesus! Thank you for the blood. Someone say thank you for the blood. Thank you for the blood. Even guys say it because you did it. Eh? Thank you for the blood. Because the guys are like, oh, yeah, you know. But who put it there? Thank you for the blood. Okay, who's gotten pregnant? And I mean, I, I want to ask you a question. Who wants to share? Yeah, you, you want to share? Yeah, Lelo, your wife will share. Give her the microphone. Yeah, yeah. How many kids do you have now? Two, exactly. How did you know you were pregnant? That's my question. Uh, how did I know? Okay, for starters, my period stopped. Okay. Uh, but does that mean you're pregnant every time your period stops? So then I went for a blood test. You went for a test? Yes, to confirm. Yeah. And the test shows and positive. Me, Watch this now. The, the test shows positive. I want to do something. The test, you know, the test shows positive. Oh, wow. The test shows, so, the only way you knew was because you had a medical report. That's correct. So, guess what? When you had a medical report, how did you feel when you were going back home? I was excited the first time because I didn't realize it. And then I called my husband. Did you call your husband? Yes. She was, she, I, I want to show you what it means to live by the word. Because the word is also a report. Yes. When the doctor said you were pregnant, did you feel it? No. Nope. Did you taste it? Nope. Did you see it? All you had was a paper. All you had was a document. And guess what? It was even someone that told you what the document meant. You are in church now. The pastor is telling you what the document means. The document is the word of God. What does the word of God say? He says, oh my God. He says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well. He doesn't matter if you live in Africa or you live outside Africa. He said, it shall be well. The challenge is that, oh my God. Are you here? Let me ask you one more question, my sister. When those of you were pregnant, did you say, no, doctor, no, I can't be pregnant. Oh, no, doctor, no, I can't be pregnant. No, is that what you said? No, I didn't even see the paper before I said, okay. Are you sure? I said, yes, the result is out. I had not collected physical paper. The lab technicians brought it in much later. I want to ask you a question. When the doctor tells you you are pregnant, why don't you say, no, I'm not. No, 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 I'm not. No, no, I'm not. No, no, I'm not. Even those that say, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. They know they are. Yes or no? So, so watch this now. How does the doctor know you're pregnant? The doctor, the doctor gives you a report. Then the Bible says in the book of Isaiah, it said, the word of God is report. How do I know? Whose report will you believe? Will you we'll believe the report of the Lord? If through one report you can know you are pregnant, through that same report you can know you do well. Thank you, ma'am. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? The problem is this. You are not looking at the report. You are not paying attention at the report. That's what the report said. Isaiah says, whose report will you believe? So, she said, I didn't feel pregnant. Like some of you don't feel rich. 
But the word of God says, the report says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. That's what the report says. So, the, the, test, the, the pregnancy says double lines, positive, praise God. Doctor says, well, and, and you know, there's another problem. There can be reports and there can be reports. So, the Bible says, if two reports are clashing, it says, whose report do you believe? Because we believe the report of the Lord. What the doctor said is the fact, but what God says is the truth. Facts are always changing. Whose report do you believe? And the reason I'm saying so is that when you're living by faith, it's a decision not to live by your feelings. So when someone says, are you full of joy? I am full of joy. But it doesn't mean that I'm happy. Because happiness is a feeling. Sometimes my, my mood is very high. Sometimes my mood is not very high. But the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. There's joy on the inside. The major problem is this. We have been trained all our life to leave our feelings. But God is challenging us to live by faith. You know why? Because without living by faith, you can't see the result of faith. Which report do you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord. And the reason I'm saying so is this. In this world, there'll be many reports. There'll be reports of what you can do. The report of what you can get to. The report of what you, what you have and what you don't have. But the Bible says the report of the Lord. And I'm saying to you today because faith in God will overcome any challenge. Some of you, you've been told before and says, this thing is impossible. Which report do you believe? You know, in the second service, we had such a great time. A, 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 you know, a, a, lady, a, lady, a lady just... As I was sharing, I, I saw her and I remember she had a testimony. And I said, are you the one just to be sure? I said, I'm the one. And she began to say to us and say, I think she had an operation six years ago. I don't know who remembers if you were here. 2016? Yeah, yeah. 2016. She, she was age 17. He said something went wrong with her fallopian tubes. And at Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, which is a very standard hospital, they removed a fallopian tubes. And she joined next level prayers. And you know how we pray? We believe God for big things. We believe that there's nothing God cannot do. And we prayed. And she began to feel something in her stomach. And she went to another hospital that is very good in our country. It's called Premier Hospital. She went to Premier. And Premier said, why did you say they removed your, your fallopian tube? He said, because they did. The, the doctor said, no, they didn't remove your fallopian tube. And she said, doctor, look. This is the place where they cut it because the sky is still there. The doctor said, well, I can see two fallopian tubes here. He said, no. Then they did the test and showed her the test. And when they did the test, you know what happened to her again? The doctor said, just for you to, make, in case you, maybe you were too young to understand what they did to you, go back to Luth. Let him ask for your file. She went back to Luth. The doctors brought her her file. The file showed that a fallopian tube had been removed. doctor said, one says it's been removed, one says it's there. We know fallopian tubes don't grow. How did they come back? She said, God did it. That is the power of faith. What does faith do? Faith makes impossibility possible. That's the power of faith. And, and the reason I'm saying so to you that there's some of you here, maybe it's your child that is sick. Maybe it's your finance that has a problem. Maybe you're waiting for some appointment and you're wondering what can be done. Where there is a gap, your faith can make a difference. Bible says all things are possible to him that believeth. Take note of this. All things are possible to him that believeth. There are dreams I have that naturally I don't have the capacity to make them happen. But I always tell myself, my faith can do it. My faith in God can do it. With God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. Some of you, they say, you don't have father, you don't have mother connection. Your faith, but you have faith. If you don't have father, you don't have mother, but you have faith. Your faith in God can do it. Say, I walk by faith and not by sight. Say, I walk by faith and not by sight. So why, why is faith important, number one? Because 
That's the way you please God. Without faith, you cannot please God. You can pray. We, who is that to pray to? You don't believe it's there. You can worship. That's why some of you, you have a hard time worshiping because you really don't realize that when worshiping, that this is spiritual, this is powerful, that this is life-changing, that this is worship. Oh. Sometimes when we worship, tears come down our eyes and people are like, what's wrong with you? You know why tears come down our eyes? Camera, zoom into my face. <laughs> why you see someone worshiping and their tears are coming down their eyes? And you're asking, why is tears coming down your eyes? It tells me that the one you're worshiping is not real to you. Because when you worship by faith and you are intimate in the presence of the one you worship, the glory of his presence, the glory of his person fills the whole of your life. It's not as if you want to cry. It's just that your human senses become overwhelmed by his glory. All of a sudden, the words of Peter begin to matter to you when Peter says, don't let us live here because we've come into a place of encounter. We've come into a moment of visitation. Then all of a sudden, without you explaining why. So I said, when you cry, are you sad or you're happy? We don't even know what to describe it because the emotion is called spiritual. That emotion is, and tears begin to stream down our eyes and you just begin to say, I have made you too small in my eyes, oh God. Oh God, I've made it too small. I've made mountains of things that are tiny. What a mighty God you are. Oh, you are the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. That is who you are. That is who you are. And let me tell you something. When in a deep place of prayer and worship, your problem becomes smaller. I'm telling you. You even begin to ask yourself that, what was making me cry before? Because all of a sudden, it's now small. Praise God. Why is faith important? Ephesians chapter 6. The last scripture we're going to read. Verse 16. What is faith? Leave him at the word. Why is faith important? There's nothing that God has promised to you that you can accept through faith. Because faith is what makes you access the power of God. Faith is what helps you access the power of God. Let me give you the, let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. Just imagine, I, you know, just imagine I go back home and this is not true. And my house is in total darkness. All of, you know, I was, all of our people that help us in the house, my kids, all of them are using candle to read. So I say to my wife and I say, excuse me, honey, why is there no light? Why are you using candle to read? Why is, why is there no light? And my wife said, um, why is there no light? That's true. Oh, I didn't turn on the lights. How would you feel? I'm like, hmm. Something is wrong. That's what faith is like. It's the duty of the power company to supply power to your house. It's your duty to put on the switch to have light in your house. Why am I saying that to you? God has done everything in Christ Jesus. It's your faith you used to bring it into your habitation. And that's why whatever you can believe God for cannot happen in your life. Because it starts with your faith. Let's close with this, please. Ephesians chapter 6. So faith accesses God's power. So the question is that, are you going to choose to live by feelings? Or are you going to choose to live by faith? <laughs> Nobody wants to help me. That's feelings. What does living by faith say? God says, the Lord is my very present help in time of trouble. Are you here? That's what the word says. He said, the Lord is my very present help. Feeling says, feeling says, when I look on the right, look on the left, there's nobody to help me. Feeling is always based on what you see, what you touch, what you hear. Nobody says, but the Lord says, the Lord is my, the word says, the Lord is my very present help in time of trouble. You say, I, I don't know what happened. I got in the contract. Now, everything is stuck. That's what feeling says. You know what the Lord says? Whatever God does, it does forever. You know what that means? That means if God gave me a contract, he will not take it back. He said the gifts and the callings of God are what? Are without repentance. Maybe you are here, they told you that, ah, you know, maybe, maybe your future will not be bright. You say, it's too late. 
Isaiah chapter 3 verse 10. He says, say unto the righteous, it shall be well with you. The last, the last verse and then we'll close. Ephesians chapter 6, quickly please. Oh, glory to God. I say glory to God. Wednesday will be a great service for you to attend. Amen. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18. In this chapter, Paul was describing the whole armor of God. Then he goes to this place, he says, above all. When he said above all, I got confused. I was like, what does it mean by above all? Is it prioritizing what the armory will look like? He says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherein you have been able to quench all the fairy that of the wicked. Now, it's important. So, he says, it's your job to quench what? The fairy that of the wicked. Question, what are the fairy that of the wicked? Let me tell you what it is. The biggest way that will attack you is by throwing thoughts, negative thoughts into you. Let me give you an example. You are ugly. Many of you don't know that's an attack. You know why? Once it says you are ugly, you believe you are ugly, then you say nobody will marry me because I'm ugly. Then it becomes a problem. The devil tells you things like, you will not do well in life. And because you believe you will not do well in life, you, start, you stop attempting big things. Because in your mind, I will not what? Do well in life. Tell me something else. Satan says again. Tell me. You won't get married. So, whenever you don't get married, what happens to you? You keep your Instagram unclosed. Because after all, who's going to marry me? I know I'm not going to get married. After church, people are waiting to meet one another, join in cells. You are in a hurry to go because of your mind. Who's looking for me? But if you know they're looking for you, you want to stay around? They're looking for me everywhere. I'm hot cake. Praise God. So after service, you just see yourself going because I don't understand how you can be single if I want to marry you and your Instagram page is closed. Oh yeah. Cl cover your face. Praise God. So guess what? So the devil brings us thoughts to you and this is what you do. The Bible says this is how you quench the fairy that of the enemy. Once Satan makes way into your life with the thoughts, whatever it puts in your heart as the thoughts will ultimately come into your life eventually. What do you do? Before it becomes a material equivalent, can I say it this way? You must remember this. Thoughts always, oh wow. Lord help me say this. Thoughts always attract their material equivalents. What do I mean? Like a check. If I give you a check for 200,000 naira, you will get cash. So, that's how thoughts are. Once you have a thought under the right condition of exchange, the physical thing you're thinking about will happen to you. It's called the law of attraction. Oh, glory to God. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So, what do you do? Once the thought comes, this is what you do. Very powerful. Once the thought comes, you go back. You go back to the word of God. Find what the word of God says and say it. You know why? Thought listens to words. You'll find the word of God and say it. So, I'll give you a story, my, my story. One time, I was driving and the voice just came and you will have an accident. Ah! You know, and let me tell you the way you know it's spiritual. When those particular thoughts, when they come, they come with a particular fear. Oh my God. You, I'm telling you something deeper. These thoughts, the way, they come with a fear. They will come with it. It's not be normal like something just went through my mind. It will come with its own special fear. It will enter. Hey, I just felt it. I said, wow. Then the Lord just told me that was an attack. I just said, no. The Bible says, it shall give his angels charge over me. Lest I dash my foot against any stone. That is the way you raise your shield of faith. You will just, some of you now, I told you, you know what? Your future will not be bright. You will just say, no. The Bible says the path of the righteous is like a shiny light. shall shine brighter and brighter to the perfect day. What are you doing? By speaking, you are raising your shield of faith. The major problem is that when people have such kind of thought, they shut up. They don't understand a short mouth is a short destiny. A short mouth is a short destiny. Sit down, just say you. All this time will just fail. You said no. The Lord will perfect all that concerns me. Every time you're speaking, what are you doing? I'm raising the shield of faith. What am I doing? So, when the devil brings, every time the devil tries to send me an arrow, I raise the shield of faith. By what? By speaking. I raise the shield of faith. By saying, so you don't have a child. He said, no. The Bible says, none amongst them shall be barren. Praise God. 
That was one of the things that used to oppress me for a long time. He told me, he said, mm, all this born again, born again, doing, you will never have a child. Then my cousin was a key spoke person for the devil. He would be playing with it and say some things, but the way it came to me was that I will never have a child. He said, you'll never be able to give birth to a child. And he gave me the reasons why, that you couldn't give birth to a child. But I kept on him, I said, no. The Bible says I'm fruitful. I say I'm fruitful. I say I'm fruitful. And praise God, I am fruitful. The problem is that when Satan attacks you, you keep quiet. Don't keep quiet. Say something. Do you notice? When Satan, oh wow. When Lucifer was going to attack God, how did he attack God? By speaking. He said, I will be like God. I will exalt my children at the most high. What did God do? God spoke back. He says, you shall be demoted. You shall be demoted. Because as he said, he opened fire. If God spoke back, why are you not talking? That's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So when that thought says, because of dollar, you will not do well in business. Say, just tell yourself, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Since I was born, now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Neither have I seen a sleeping. Stand on your feet, let's pray. Stand on your feet, let's pray.